Okay, so as a part of uh, this, because we are assuming a quarterly mode of drawdown, right? We can we we have to change it depending on the period. So initially we'll put the quarter, then we'll apply the formula if it changes to half yearly or any other mode. So when we are talking about uh, a quarterly mode of payment, I can use again the E date kind of numbers, E date kind of a formula, where initially I will bring in the current date itself. Let me put uh, the heading and in interest during construction. So I will bring out the date which is the start date of the project initially to start with. Right, I am bringing in the start date of the project and then I am simply adding up the e-date formula because I am looking at it on a quarterly basis. I am looking at it on a quarterly basis. No, it is the date. Just I did not change the format. Yeah, that first April start date of the project. Just equal to to that. So it is first April 2012. That is what we have taken as the start date of the project. Then similarly, I just do a simple e date of this number, comma three, depending on depending on uh, because it's a quarterly kind of a quarterly kind of a period i'll simply take it as e date this number comma 3 and probably i'll extend it to all and i'll do the formatting as a date this is if I don't uh, take into consideration, let's say, if I don't take into consideration any formula or anything, this is what I'll manually do. I mean, depending on, I mean, here I did not take into consideration any quarterly or annual or any of that mode of payment, right? But if I, if I say, no, I want to use this because... Uh, I mean, I want to use this drop down information so that depending on whether it is changed as quarterly or annual or half yearly, the dates are reflected accordingly. Now it becomes a complex formula for me. Now, okay, I'll use uh, a few things there. Okay, here because we have selected quarterly, what I'll do is in this financing sheet, I will use one intermediate value, right, I will use one intermediate uh, value which is like a payment frequency, 3 months, 6 months, whatever it is, depending on whether the selected amount is a quarter or semi-annual or annual. So I will say payment frequency, just showing how do we incorporate the complexity here? Payment frequency, I am simply saying, and I will say if I will use a simple if function, which will say if this if this cell value if If this cell value is equal to quarterly, take it as 3, the payment frequency. Otherwise, if the same cell value is equal to 
half yearly take it as 6 otherwise i am assuming only three possibilities at this moment either quarterly or half yearly or annual right i will simply put it either as quarterly or half yearly as annual so probably if you are introducing one more let's say monthly or some other bi monthly kind of drag down uh, bi monthly kind of uh, loan uh, uh, loan taking draw down you can add something more into this formula so it will show me depending on because i have selected quarterly there it will show me 3 and uh, probably if i change from quarterly here let's say to half yearly here it should show me 6 so the value is updated accordingly to start with i am using as a temporary variable Yeah, quarterly is three it's like you are you are paying every three months or you are you are withdrawing every three months i mean because it does not understand what is quarter uh, if it is not either quarterly or half yearly let's say if i'm choosing annual if i'm choosing annual year it should show me 12 because i'm going with only three possibilities quarterly if it is quarterly it is three if it is half yearly, it is 6. For anything else, it is 12 because I am going with only 3 assumptions to start with. Quarterly, half yearly and annual. But if you say I'm, I have a monthly option also in that, then you add one more. Right? So, I will again change it back to quarterly. Just uh, trying to bring in more dynamicness. If you say that every time it will be only quarterly, you don't need to do this much of exercise. Right? Now I am taking this, right, instead of, uh, so the first one I will write it as it is, as a simplicity. First one I will keep it as it is, equal to that start date of the project. Now here I will pull a rule. Here I will pull a rule saying if this date, the previous date, is less than my construction completion date. Whatever was my construction completion date, as long as that date is less than my construction completion date, which is my construction completion date is coming from here. Construction end date. As long as that is less, I will do an e date of this date, comma the pay payment frequency. I mean the, the previous date. Yeah. The, the previous date. First April twelfth comma the payment frequency whatever came here or else I will put a blank so now you see the next date comes out as 1st July 12 if the if this date is if this date is less than the construction ended so which means as long as i am earlier to my construction end date itself i'll typically i'll uh, typically uh, add up the dates now i can drag this down so before i drag it down i need to put the appropriate dollars so if this value is uh, less than this date so this date i'll put a dollar yeah, this is the one. Okay, let me just complete this part. Yeah, 
So, so you see here. Okay. All I am saying is if or probably in the first cell I will just take equal to whatever is the start date of my project. This is the start date of my project. Right. This is the start date of my project. Now all I am saying is if this start date this is the start date of the project. This start date is less than the end date of the project. As long as the as long as the previous date is less than the end date of the project, end construction date. End construction date of the project. I am saying I will add up that quarter or depending on the payment frequency, if it is 3 months or 6 months or 12 months, I will add that up. Right? So that is where I am adding, adding E date. Yeah. Because we need the date after 3 months. Every 3 months date we require. If the payment frequency is half yearly, I will get every 6 months date. So I am saying E date, I will come to this sheet. So to this date, whatever was the previous date, I will add 3 months. The, instead of 3, I am selecting this payment frequency, which is like 3. So I am saying it should give me the next date because I am drawing down every quarter. I am drawing down every quarter. It should give me the quarterly drawdown amount. So it should be E date into the E date, uh, this date, 41,000, whatever, 1st April, comma the 3. And comma, I will put it as a blank. In case. In case uh, the, the payment frequency, I mean in case uh, the, you cross the date, I will not add anything to that. So once you enter this, only simple logic regarding uh, the dollar is, See, when, if you don't put any dollar, when you are, it only works during dragging. When you are trying to drag the formula either down or to the right, if you don't put your dollar, all the inputs will move the same way. Now here, if I just look at this formula, we have written B21, right? I assume that B2, no dollars are there, B2, B21, C18, these are the numbers. So now I want to write once and then drag down. If I am dragging down, the row numbers will increase in the input automatically. So B21 will become B22, B2 will become B3, again B21, B22, C18 will become C19. Now based on that I need to check which behavior I require. So okay, B21 becoming, uh, B21 is this one. B22 is this one. This is the right behavior for me. Whereas, uh, whereas B2, basic calculations B2. Basic calculations B2 is this one. It will become B3. So, it, this will become to this value. I don't want a comparison with this value. I still want a comparison with my basic, I mean, that construction end date itself. So, the 2 should not become 3. B2 should not become B3. So, a dollar is mandatory before 2. Whether I put it before B or not there, before B, it becomes mandatory when I am trying to drag it sideways. But when I am trying to drag it down or up, it matters only if, it, if that dollar is there before the number or not. If it is not there before the number and it is still there before the alphabet, it hardly makes any difference e even if I don't put a dollar also. 
especially when I am dragging down. Right? Number before the number, the dollar is mandatory. Okay, so these are the dates which I have. And based on this, I'll have to see what is my what is my uh, uh, I mean what is my uh, debt amount during each of these periods because I am dragging it on a quarterly basis. Okay, so now this is the amount of debt in the first year. So because it's a quarterly thing. I will uh, I will uh, uh, distribute it across the four quarters. So logically speaking, this amount should be this debt, right? The, uh, this debt divided by four. But how do I get my four? So that's where I'll put twelve divided by the payment frequency. So that is what will tell me that during the first quarter, I will draw something equivalent to these many lakhs. Yeah, C20 and uh, B2. Sorry? Huh, I mean, you just change the name of it. Yeah, it's not payment. It's a drawdown itself. Yeah, name is changed. So, you are drawing down. So, when you are drawing. So, here, I mean, if I don't have any logic, I'll have to say that uh, every quarter, if I'm going with a quarterly data, every quarter I'm going to draw down this much. Right, every quarter I am going to draw down this much, especially for the first year. Right, especially for the first year, I am going to draw down this much. So, we will first uh, put the static model, assuming the quarter, then we will build in the dynamicness into it. So, at least if I am assuming it to be quarter. Every quarter I will draw down something like this. At least for the first four quarters. For the first four quarters. I will draw down this amount. Because my total debt is this much. My total debt is this much. And uh, all the four quarters I am drawing down equally. Because my drawdown frequency is quarterly. Similarly in the second year I will do the same thing. This is my debt for the second year. 3907 is my debt for the second year. So I am drawing this down again in the four equal quarters. So I am drawing it down as 12 divided by the payment frequency. Which is giving me that in the second year my drawdown amounts are this much. So if I don't have much of dynamicness in place, assuming that everything is quarterly, this is how I am going to draw down. Right? This is how I am going to draw down. In each of the quarters. Right? The, the, the dynamic part will build in. First, let's uh, try to compute the interest during this construction period. Right? So, in the first year, I am going to draw down because my total debt, as simple as my total debt is these many. Yeah, four, four quarters of this financial year.
the cell to this one. So probably I will call this as time or date and here I am calling it as amount. I will put something called cumulative and I will put interest. Four headings. So I am talking that these are the amounts that I am drawing down in the eight quarters. And based on that, I can do a cumulative uh, calculation. Cumulative, the first one, I will take it as the previous one itself. So my cumulative here is this much. Whereas right from the second one, I will add the first one, the previous one plus that period's one. Because every, every quarter I am taking, every quarter I am taking that much amount. So my cumulative drawdown has happened this much. The same thing I can drag till the last. So I have dragged, I have drawn something amount, this much amount, which is nothing but I have taken all these two, which is close to 7,142 lakhs, but during different, different quarters. Now for the first quarter, the interest would be only for the first three months. See, any interest is a quarterly interest. Right? So, the interest for the first quarter or for that matter any quarter, it's only the quarterly interest on that amount which I am drawing down. So, that is where I am marking this as this amount for that period multiplied by whatever the interest rate that is applicable. Interest rate that is applicable is this 12% into the payment frequency because drawdown frequency because it is 3 months. If I'm So, it should be a quarterly rate. So, it is 3 by 12. So, which is coming out to the interest for that period is 24 lakhs. See, all I am taking is this is my total amount on that period. On that total amount, I have to be charged 12% interest rate. But that 12% interest rate is per year. So as good as saying per quarter it is 3% interest rate. So I am multiplying my total amount, whatever I have drawn, at the rate of 3%. Right? So that for that itself, I am putting this formula where I am saying, okay, D21 is the amount, total cumulative amount multiplied by assumptions B24 is the interest rate, 12%. Whatever I am drawing, I have to pay an interest rate of 12%. So the 12% is coming from there. So before I drag, I can put a dollar before 24 and financing C18 is this drawdown. So that is an annual interest. Now I have to convert it into a quarterly interest. So that's where I have multiplied by 3 by 12. This is 1 by 4 per quarter. So this is giving me that this is the interest during the construction. I mean for the first, first quarter drawdown. This is my interest. And the same way when I drag it down. Oh, something else. Mm, C18 or C20. Yeah, correct. So, this is my total interest during the construction period. So, when I now compute interest during construction, now it's not a small amount, it's a significant amount. Coming almost to 923 lakhs. So 9.23 crores is the interest which I am paying during the, sorry, average is, yeah, 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 sure. 
Okay, so now even this cost, so this is an iterative phase. This cost will add up to our total construction phase cost. So now I'll say total project cost including IDC. This I'll equate it to whatever is this IDC amount plus my total cost of the project. Total cost of the project is these two years. This much plus this much. The two years, two years individual cost plus the total IDC which is coming out for our project the total cost is this much for the first two years. Yeah, three totals. Your original two years uh, individual totals plus your IDC. Now again, the debt and equity breakup comes here. This is the actual amount on which you are going for the loan. On which the real payment of the loan, the interest and the principal typically take place. So, your debt breakup on this. So, based on this amount, you will go with the debt and equity. You will go with your uh, debt and equity. Where you are treating the debt as 60% of this amount. So this amount, I will take the dollars here multiplied by 60%. This is my debt amount. So my actual final debt borrowing, whatever I am doing is this much, my total uh, debt capital because as we said, even that interest during the construction period is also capitalized. So that's where uh, because of that funda, we are saying this is the total debt. This is the total equity for us. So this 5,000, uh, 5, 131 lakhs or 51 crores should be the investment from my side. And uh, 7,700 lakhs or 77 crores, approximately 76.97 crores will be given by the bank as a part of its uh, financing plan. Right? Yeah, 128 crores. 128.28 crores. The total project cost including uh, all in the two years, first two years. Though you are spending uh, giving an upfront premium of 3000 crores or th 30 crores, First two years you are paying only 15 crores. So probably if you want to add those 15 crores which you are at to pay also, it will cost another 15 crores more. So which would be like 128 plus 15, 143 kind of crores. So the project cost is more or less in that region. So most of the projects today we are seeing are in terms of 2000 crores and probably the LNT metro is around 12,000 crores. So, I mean, again, uh, from that numbers, probably this is a slightly smaller project. You are not giving it. You are bidding based on this. See. Yeah, depends on what model we are talking of? See, or what is your role? Probably uh, the, the role could be like you will, you, the government will give this to some party to, to evaluate the feasibility of the project on its behalf. Right? Actually, this project uh, which I have uh, consulted is more on that role. A company which is working on behalf of the government to Create an initial feasibility scenario. Now, from there, it will open to the bidders. Even the even when you are doing as a private party, 
right let's say abc xyz have to bid in for this project now the government is saying all these things have to be done you have to conduct your own thing on how will i get my revenues what will be the approximate cost that will incur for me because i am a construction company if you are a private player you are you have construction or you are tying up with a epc contractor either of the ways you know what is your numbers now based on that you are saying whether it is feasible for you now the government is asking for 30 crores upfront premium there are so many things they are asking for if that is the case how much is it feasible for you how much uh, i mean if the sometimes what happens is the government directly says you have to execute this project at this cost so depending on the kind of a bidding uh, process there are different types of auctions depending on the type of auction you are going for it is uh, either the government will say okay this project has to be executed at this much cost yeah, because most of the time this project has to be cost and the government is ready to give that much of funding ha uh, government is ready to give that much of funding and uh, i mean because it's a bot kind uh, bot uh, kind of a project where you are uh, operating and the revenues come to you now you it's up to you to evaluate see in this project what is happening the government is asking for annual lease rental right on the land which it is giving and some upfront premium payment and at the end of the period let's say 33 years lease it has to be handed over to the government so whatever the revenues now now my objective is to really evaluate within this 33 year period whatever the revenues i can make out what return is it going to give to me because after the 33 year period i may simply surrender this to the government so this 33 years i have to pay something so it all in this case of project everything depends on how am i forecasting the various revenues and expenses see the construction see at the end in this case the government is simply giving me in this land you develop the bus shelter right probably i'll uh, give you one uh, uh, project proposal document which i think i should be having uh, what the, what all the government expects in this land the 30 acres or 35 acres it will simply specify <coughs> i'll give you this 35 acres of land in this i want a bus terminus with blah 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 facilities so that may be like uh, probably out of the 30 acres of land it is saying it may simply say 20 25 acres all for all these now probably you may still have that 5 acres or 10 acres which may be customizable by you as per your thinking right and at the end you are given the full flexibility to operate but because you are using the land and all the facilities you have to pay some kind of a premium to the government regularly premium as well as uh, annual rentals lease rentals and all that and after the period so during this period all are enjoyed by you the revenues and operations maintenance everything after the 33 year period you are simply transferring it to the government probably may not be at any extra cost so whatever you are going to get so your feasibility analysis is very simple now okay whatever i construct on it see they will say minimum these are the things that should be there minimum these are the things that should be there now based on that you will typically uh, give your quote on how much you are willing to spend whether you are willing to see it could it could very well be how much you are willing to spend on it and uh, probably you may say i'll spend 25 250 crores or 500 crores or whatever minimum this much has to be spent now depending on how you are utilizing the space you will try to that 30 crores you may say i am ready to pay you 50 crores so whosoever is ready to pay more upfront fee to the government the government may be willing to handle the hand over the project to that party so how much upfront fee can i collect so as a, as on behalf of the government if you have to plan around this project what are the sources of revenue for the government there 
अप रेंट प्री कलेक्शन एंड योर लीज रेंटल हाउ मच आई कैन कलेक्ट इन दीज टू एस्पेक्ट सो दैट द प्राइवेट पार्टी इज स्टिल प्रॉफिटेबल in a in a most average situation if he is thinking in a more innovative manner probably he can become even more profitable right he utilize the space in a much more effective manner and all he can go even more profitable but at the end of the day at least he should be benefiting from this project and at the same time the government should get a constant revenue because at the end of the period any of the project is going to the government so again depending on the kind of the model in, in let's say in case of roads and uh, highways the major source of revenue is the toll the toll which you are putting to whatever period i can collect it and in that again probably i may have to give something to the government or i can completely use it for my own and at the end of the period probably i can transfer it to the government at some pre agreed cost or it may not be any cost at all a private party building it let's say for 5 years 10 years 20 year period running it after that there could be where i can transfer it to the government at some agreed upon cost or it may be a direct transfer when it is a direct transfer whatever i am getting during this period i can charge my own user development fees and all this kind of stuff toll road fees and all that but every year because of using that entire thing i may have to pay something to the government now whosoever is willing to pay more as an upfront fee as well as annual uh, development uh, kind of a fee they are the ones who are awarded the contract uh, both both see pricing as well as facilities both both have a cap so facilities you have to provide this minimum facilities yeah i'll show you one uh, concessional agreement once we are just done with this i'll just put up that for one of that merit project i think i have so i'll just put up that and show what all government is expecting as a part of that project and what all it is going to give okay so this is my final debt and equity during this project so based on this i can very well find out what is my typical loan repayment schedule because i know that this is the final loan which i am going to take every quarter right or probably i can simply uh, find out what is my quarterly repayment schedule starting 3 years from now today the loan amount is worth this much right and uh, in the first 3 years in the first 2 years my interest is uh, getting applicable but again uh, it is getting capitalized right and the real interest payment on my income statement is occurring only after the moratorium period so that's where i can very well say up to the moratorium period i can very well think of what is my interest and principal for the period and after the moratorium period starts actually it's a kind of an emi after the moratorium period is over whatever ends up that is the actual starting phase for my emi or eqi in this case it may be eqi or eyi equated yearly installment i may not be paying on a monthly basis i have drawn down on a monthly basis but i may have to pay on an yearly basis itself to the bank or i may have to pay it on a, so depending on what is the payment schedule the bank is expecting i may have to actually account for it as a part of my interest and principal so just to extend this uh, repayment schedule right we'll just do this one for today that will uh, that will give a logical conclusion loan repayment schedule i'll simply extend the same case i'll simply extend this same thing so 
So I'll take the same dates. So at least up to the moratorium period. So I'll still date E date itself for this also. Or probably from here itself. Because I need it for all the periods. Now I'll make it up to the total 15 year period. Right, so from the second year itself, I'll take it as E date, this comma three, which is the payment frequency. I'll make it this one without any condition so that I can drag it almost up to whatever period required. Okay, this one I have to put a dollar. Yeah. I mean, I have just taken the first one, the start date. And after that, I have simply said E date with a three month period. So let's say for whatever period, let it be the case. After that, we will put the rules. Right? Yeah. You just put E date. Start date. Start date is the previous date, 1st April, comma whatever was your payment frequency. Just doing the same exercise which we have done for your uh, IDC. Because uh, now the loan amount got revised, which included your IDC also. The same exercise, I am just putting amount. Here I will write amount drawn. If there is any repayment, I'll talk about a repayment. Then I'll talk about closing balance and interest. So for each of the periods, I'm trying to find out probably before all this, I'll even put opening balance. So depending on uh, how much I am paying off, how much is still left for each of the quarters, I am simply building a loan repayment schedule. Initially, I don't have any balance. Right? Because I didn't borrow anything on. So on that period, I am borrowing whatever is my debt amount. By 4 is what I have borrowed during that period. So during that period, so, okay. Again, this has to be broken up. This is the debt overall. Now I need to break this debt into 40 and 60. Year 1 and year 2. So I will break it up as this is my total debt. So just drag only up to 3 years or something. We don't need so much. Just up to 15 or 16 you just drag. You don't need more than that. So there we are saying opening balance is this much. And uh, we have to know how much has to be drawn down to this year. So our total debt is this much. So I have to break it down into year 1 and year 2. What is the debt percentage and all. So, 40% is in the first year and 60% is in the second year. So, what I will simply do is this number, I multiply it by 40% from the assumption sheet. This is my 40%. Register. Yeah, you don't need for a long period anyhow. Because after the moratorium period is over, whatever is the final outstanding balance that is there, on that we'll directly apply the equated installment over a 12 year period. So one direct formula will suffice for that. So up to the up to the third year where the moratorium period is applicable, we'll uh, have to make this kind of a schedule. So the debt wise. 
ओवरऑल डेट इज दिस मच आई जस्ट नीड अ ब्रेकअप बिटवीन फोर्टी एंड सिक्सटी बिकॉज फर्स्ट इयर इज दिस मच इक्वल टू दिस अमाउंट मल्टीप्लाइड बाय दैट फोर्टी परसेंट एज अ पार्ट ऑफ अवर एजम्शन so for the next period it is going to be this one that is this total but first year versus second year 40 and 60 so in the first year in the four quarters i am drawing down this much amount Second year in the four quarters, I am drawing down this much of amount. The remaining, the balance between these two, because overall I am drawing seven thousand six hundred or seven thousand six hundred and ninety-seven. Out of that, forty percent is in the first year, and the remaining sixty percent is in the second year. For for which one? No, this is my debt, which I am bank is not giving me more. so the costs i have already included the inflation whatever whatever it is costing me right the bank is not giving me more because of inflation only for my costs i'll have to ah uh, for me it applies so the amount drawn i am taking as this divided by 4 so in the first year or first four quarters at least for the first four quarters i'll make it equivalent to this amount just making a schedule for the first four quarters it is equal to this much which is nothing but your loan amount divided by 4 no that uh, 12 3 divided by uh, i mean 12 divided by the payment frequency so the more and more if you are hard coding it you are losing out on the dynamicness so instead of 4 i may have to make it as 12 divided by the payment frequency so at least for the first 4 years or first 4 quarters this is the amount i am going to draw so i can drag this for the first four quarters then for the next four quarters i am going to draw based on the second year amount this divided by 12 divided by the payment frequency or draw down frequency again i am applying the appropriate dollars So in the second quarter or second year, my drawdown amount is this much for the next four quarters. So these are my numbers which I am drawing down. So these many lakhs. So it's nothing but by four first year's debt by four in the first year, second year's debt by four for the next four quarters. This is what I am drawing down. but no repayment in any of the periods right no repayment in any of the periods so typically because i am not doing any kind of a repayment my loan my closing balance will obviously be equal to the opening balance because i am not paying anything the next period's interest or uh, cumulative closing balance is nothing but the previous period's closing balance plus the new loan which i have taken during that period which is like a cumulative so for each of the periods i can put this cumulative now cumulative has gone up to 7697 which is nothing but i am adding up each of these things at each stage just like your previous idc this uh, up to here it's exactly same as your idc construction and the interest is again on this amount 
we are talking of on this loan amount that 12 percent on a quarterly basis so the 12 percent the interest comes from here this is my interest into quarterly basis which comes from my financing sheet based on my drawdown frequency divided by 12 so this is not this is directly used for making my pnl statement now okay i have put uh, the dollars and i have finally dragged the interest now simple okay last period it is 230 lakhs or 2.3 crores now if i can get my consortium somewhere at 11.5 percent not at 12 percent but only at 11.5 percent you see what is the difference 10 lakhs directly reduce only for that period's interest now you see overall also idc during construction was only 8.85 crores Earlier we had 9.21, almost 40 lakhs difference. So it's not a small amount. If I can get the deal, which can take a huge role in my make or break decision. Right? So everything is an assumption. So probably yes, this 5%, as per your assumption, now you are changing it, let's say, to 7%. Of course, nothing big has happened. Only one year we have applied the inflation till date. The more we get into your revenue and uh, cost assumption, that number is going to be a very significant number. But even here it has become 9.29 crores. Almost uh, 10 lakhs there is an increase. Because your construction cost has gone up because of that inflation adjustment. So the intention here is if I maintain it like this, probably I can play around with my numbers. So that is where my decision is changing because that will affect my IRR of the project. So because of which my decision whether to go forward or back out from the project will typically depend on. Right? Alright. So now once this is there, so this is my total principal amount as of this period and of course in the next one year so my drawdown period is over now after the next one year my drawdowns are simply zeros at least one more year so i can simply drag this part my principal is still that much amount only because no more drawdowns my principal is that much amount now on this principle for the next 12 years, for the next 12 years, I have to pay my interest as well as the principal. My total principal, because I have not drawn down anything, all four are zeros. Next year, moratorium period. This is the period of moratorium where I did not draw anything. No interest applicable during that period because there is a one year moratorium period after the construction period no interest during that period so my principal is remaining at this number itself so this is my principal at the end of three years on this principal i need to pay my interest every year and also some part of principal which i would pay as a part of my equated installment eyi Probably I will not call it EMI. More like an equated installment. So if I want to pay how much is my EYI. EYI. I will simply use one function of Excel called PMT. PMT is more like a recurring payment. Because EYI or EMI is almost like a recurring payment of equal amount at equal intervals of time. So whenever I want to find out that equal amount at equal intervals of time, I can very well depend on this EYI formula. Right? So, our PMT formula. PMT, 
I am saying the rate has to be given. The rate we know, the interest rate for this period. So 12%. This is the annual rate. Now I will assume that the payment is on an annual basis itself. So the interest rate is on an annual basis. Number of periods. I know that it is the 12 year period. Debt repayment. Debt repayment is a 12 year period. Then the present value is the loan outstanding as of now. The loan outstanding as of now I can get from here which is 7697. That is the loan outstanding as of now. Now with this information if I simply find out my EYI it says yeah yeah the last yeah the, yeah after the moratorium right so it tells me that I need to pay 1242 crores or lakhs every year 12 crores yeah yeah it's a negative itself because it's a payment it's a payment so you have to pay almost 12.42 crores every year as a part of your equal installment. Now what you can very well do is you can find out what is the principal portion of it and what is the interest portion of it. See if I take it as a loan there is a principal as well as interest. But if I take it as a bond or a debenture there is only an interest for this 12 year period. The, the principal will be after the 12 year period. Right? Probably there may not be any moratorium period in case of a bond. Every year I may have to pay. The, so those differences do exist. Right? Because now I am, I mean we will first execute it as a loan. So this is the EYI I have to pay every period. Now what I can simply do is, I will see for the next 12 years, I will see for the next 12 years what is my EYI payment. EYI is the same amount. So I will just equate it to the previous one. So all 12 years my EYI stands to be the same. But the breakup between the principal and the interest is different. We just copied it down. Because it's the same amount. EYI is more like an equated installment. So whatever it computes, that's the amount I have to pay. <laughs> the dollars? Yeah, slowly it will come off. Then here I'll break it as a principal and the interest because the principal goes in terms of reduction in your balance sheet. Whereas the interest goes into the income statement as a part of profit and loss expense. So that's where I will break it the entire thing into the principal portion as well as the interest portion out of this 12.42 uh, crores for every period I will break it down into what is the principal portion and what is the interest portion. So that is where I am taking it as for the principal portion I will use a formula called PPMT. Principle of the interest. Because it will reduce your debt liability. It will reduce your liability. Interest will go into the expense. Into the PNL statement. So that's where we need a breakup. The one single number may not suffice the whole story. So that's where we are breaking this entire thing into principal and interest. So, I mean directly Excel offers formulas for principal and the interest payment. So, for that I will use a formula called PPMT. PPMT is principal of the payment. IPMT is interest portion of the payment. So, I will say equal to PPMT. This time again I have to give the rate. The rate works out to 12%. This is the rate. Then it asks me for the PER, the period for which I want to find out this. So it's the first period. 
So I'll point it to this date. I mean to this number. Because for each period the principal and the interest will vary. So that is my first period. Then it asks me for number of periods. There are 12 years of payment. So I'll point to this 12. Then the present value. My loan amount. The loan amount. The last one. This one. So this will give me what is the breakup of the principal. So out of this amount 12.42 crores 3.18 crores is going towards the principal here. So the remaining will go towards the interest. So I can very well uh, simply do a subtraction of this number minus this number which will go towards the interest. Now this before I drag I put appropriate dollars. B24, before 24 I will put the dollar. H52 I will keep it as it is. B23 I will put the dollar. Before 23. And F52 also I will put the dollar. Now I can drag this principal amount down. So this is what my principal is for each of the years. And if I subtract from the total EMI or EYI, that gives me the interest payment. So just so once I have this breakup between my interest and principal for each of the periods, I can put the interest into the income statement as an expense and principal into the balance sheet. Uh, it will result in the repayment of the debt. It will reduce my debt liability during that period. I'm just coming there. Yeah, now with this uh, in place, we can actually do one entry into the income statement. Tomorrow when we make the PL statement, even this goes like from after EBIT, I have to subtract the interest to arrive at my PAT and I mean profit before tax and then profit after tax. So for that, I need my interest here. So these interests are for the next 12 years. So from 13th year onward, there is no interest by because I am closing off my loan. Though my project is a 31 year project. My operations wise, my uh, this way, my uh, loan wise, I am clearing off in the 12 years itself. If at all I require one more, probably I may do an overdraft or whatever. That we have to see depending on how our revenues and operation uh, expenses are moving forward. Right? So, what we will do is, uh, I mean, because we are done up to this part, uh, the next part is into revenues and expenses. Assuming these two, that would be a simpler aspect. Just the simple multiplications on how much I will get. But the real task again lies in taking all these things to the balance sheet, income statement and preparing a cash flow statement out of that. Right. So that much task is still pending. So hopefully we should start.